Yeah? All right, so we got back day today. Now, if you've ever wondered about hand position, different hand position, whether you're doing pull downs, do we do it with our hands pronated like we would on, say, a, you know, a regular bar? Do we go with a neutral position? Do we go with a supinated position like this? So today we're going to cover some of that, and I think it'll make a lot more sense. So we're going to do some biceps curls here. So today is back and biceps. But the reason I want to start with the curls is because it's going to help demonstrate the differences in our hand position. So really simple test. Try taking a dumbbell that you would normally curl with control with a regular supinated hand position, meaning pinky up. So let's take, I don't know, I'm just going to grab something here. I don't do curls very heavy. So like I said, with that hand supinated, so turning that pinky up as we come to the top here, I want you to find that weight that you could probably do for 10 reps with control. But here's the key. Make sure that this is a weight that really is challenging for 10 reps. We don't want to go, go too light here, otherwise you're not going to be able to see the difference. Once you do that, actually let's just go ahead and do this. We're going to do one set of 10 reps, finding that right weight. Second set, we're gonna do it a different way. Third set, we're gonna do it a different way. And I think this is gonna punctuate the point that I'm trying to make here. So, so again, making sure you get that good turn. Now our biceps, besides helping with flexion at the elbow, also helps supinate our hand. And I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So this is probably a hair too light for 10. So I'm gonna slow it down here, make it a little harder. Nice controlled concentric, controlled eccentric. And that's gonna bump up the intensity, make this lighter weight feel a little heavier. We can also throw in a few more reps, <clears throat> which is what I do if I ever pick up a weight that feels too light instead of just making it a throwaway set, like, oh, well, that's just a warm up. No, I'll make it a good working set by bumping up the intensity with some of those techniques. Nice. Good. So like I was saying, look what happens to the biceps when I pronate it versus, actually, let me come in to this position here. So pronated, supinated. All right, so you can see that the biceps, as it contracts and it shortens, helps supinate the hand. So we get a really strong contraction there, but we're also the strongest in this position. So now I want you to take that same exact weight. I want you to try to do this with a reverse curl position. So reverse curl looking like this. We do this to train, focus a little bit more on the brachialis that lies underneath the biceps. Why do we do that? Well, because it puts the biceps in a mechanical disadvantage. We're not strong in this position. So try it. Take that same weight and try to do a reverse curl with it. It's impossible if you use a heavy enough weight. Now in the middle, this is what I would call a neutral position. This is a hammer curl. Same thing, try it. You can do it, but you're not as strong in this position. So when we move over into biceps, same concept applies. Very strong with our hands in this supinated position, right? This is ideal for the biceps. This is so-so. This is a very weak position. So now let's grab a bar. We'll grab two different bars.
and I'll face you so you can see this. So if I'm gonna do any kind of row or a pull down like this and I supinate my hands, my biceps are in a very strong position here. So this makes me strong at this exercise because now I'm able to use all those muscles in the back plus biceps. Now, if I come with a pronated grip over the top, my biceps are in not as strong a position, just like those reverse curls. So this helps us focus a little bit more on back, a little less on biceps. And then if I were to come and you say a neutral position. Now, typically if you're in a gym, that's gonna be your bar that has the rings on the end and the handle is perpendicular to it. We can mimic that here with this. So that would be palms facing each other. This would be a neutral position. So not as strong as that supinated position, as far as the biceps are concerned, but not as weak as a pronated position. So that's right here. So those are gonna be your biggest differences. Now, why one versus the other? Well, it depends on what your goal is. If your goal is to work on strength, well then strength is coordinating different muscles working together. It's almost like an orchestra. It's the difference between a trumpet playing versus the trumpet playing with the saxophone and the trombone, etc. Those are all working together in a symphony. A compound movement is the exact same thing with our body. All those muscles working together. And when it comes to functional strength, actually doing something with your body, that's important. Versus bodybuilding is working on one muscle at a time. That's the trumpet playing all by itself. And that's a lot of what we do in bodybuilding style training, trying to work on more isolation style exercises, trying to shape the body. I like that style of training, but I also believe that it's important to also work on overall functional strength. And that does mean using compound movements. So that's what we're gonna do today. You never hear me talk about it much. Grab my water. You don't hear me talk about doing a lot of compound movements because I do like more bodybuilding style training, but I think it's important to talk about the benefit of doing compound movements. So when doing compound movements, we have the option of still zeroing in on certain areas. So for example, if I wanna focus more on just lats, probably gonna use more of that pronated hand position, the biceps are not as strong there. If I want to work on just overall strength, like I said, that coordination or that symphony, yeah, there's nothing wrong with supinating those hands and using more of the biceps. That's going to put you in a stronger position and allow you to move more weight. So with that said, I actually just put this bar away, but we're gonna pop it right back up there. Actually, you know what? Cool thing about something like this, and the reason I have this, which by the way, this was nothing fancy. I found this on Amazon. And the nice thing about this is it allows me to change hand position. I can go with a pronated position. I can go with a neutral position or supinated. So that said, let's do some pull downs with our hand in that supinated position. So we are going to end up using more biceps here and that's okay. Not everything has to be an isolation movement. And actually with these handles, I can even find a sweet spot, which I prefer it's less awkward, like fully supinated in this position to me is a little awkward. It's a little uncomfortable on my elbows. doesn't feel natural. So here I can come close to a fully supinated position, but still a little bit more natural. <clears throat> and I still want to focus on driving those elbows down, fully engage the muscles in the back, strong contraction there at the bottom, and good control. Uh, 
So if you ever wonder what the difference between a pull-up and a chin-up is, a pull-up is hands pronated, palms facing away from us. Chin-up is with our palms facing us. And so a chin-up ends up being a good bicep, excuse me, biceps exercise. Matter of fact, you can even make it more biceps dominant by not driving the elbow as much. So from a hang here, pulling up here, see how my elbows are still out in front of me? This ends up being mostly biceps. Or I can drive those elbows down and back and really get more engagement from the back. So a lot of it comes down to how much movement at the elbow. More movement at the elbow means more biceps. That's why when we're doing a pull down, hands out nice and wide, when we drive those elbows down, see it's a lot less movement there at the elbow. And that means we're using the lats more, or at least they're more dominant. All right, set two. So a lot of times you hear me talk about driving the elbows down, not getting as much movement, <laughs> looks like that. But here I'm intentionally using a little more biceps. It's much stronger position if I want to move more weight. I'll tell you one of the things I really like about these is that it allows me to come to more of a neutral position up top. It'd be the same thing when I'm doing my curls. Even though I'm supinating my hands at the top, I don't like keeping them supinated at the bottom. This is a vulnerable position here. Puts a lot of stress on the connective tissue, your tendons. So that's why you see people going from a neutral position and supinating. So here, same thing, more neutral at the top when the arm is extended, and then allowing you to rotate those hands and supinate them at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me, kind of congested today. Got some crazy allergies. My wife has a gazillion pets. Ferrets and coatis and Rabbits and dogs. Got the Grage Family Zoo here. But I do it out of love. All right, one more set of these. So watch the hand position. A little bit more neutral at the top. Starting here. Could turn them a little bit. But I don't have the stress on the biceps here. So then as I pull down, get that rotation. And you wouldn't be able to do that with a fixed bar. Ah, 
nice. So that's three sets. Now I'm gonna turn around and use a straight bar with the hands pronated. And so even though we're doing a pull down, just like we did, it's gonna feel a little different. So that's one of the cool things about back exercises is depending on small changes, for example, hand position can change the dynamic of the exercise. Then when we focus on how we initiate the movement, whether it's at the hands, making it a little more biceps dominant or initiating it at the elbow, focusing more on the back, all these little changes can really change the way an exercise feels. So for example, these are both pull downs, but they're gonna feel different. <clears throat> so I'm gonna lighten it up just a hair. Remember, we're not as strong in this position. So hands are now pronated, palms away from our body. <sighs> and then focus on driving those elbows. So we're using a little bit less biceps here, only because they're not as strong in this position. stuff good stuff so hopefully makes a little bit more sense why we would change our hand position with different bars think about the same thing in a, a row let's say we want to do a high row because we want to work more of those muscles in the middle and upper back so we can do it with a bar just like that Come here with our hands, palms down, right? This is a neutral position, right? As far as where my thumb is lined up. So this isn't bad, fairly strong here. Now, if I turn my thumbs up, which would be the same position if my hand was supinated here, nice strong position, I'm gonna be able to use even more biceps in this position. So. I'll be stronger here, but it doesn't mean I'm working the back more. It just means I'm stronger because I'm using more biceps. So probably going to make the back work harder by turning those palms down. We'll actually do some of those today. Maybe we'll do them both ways so you can feel the difference. Should be stretching here between sets, but I'm too busy talking.
you know, it's really easy to get caught up with back exercises. I think that we have to move a lot of weight in order to make those lats grow. And that's not necessarily the case. Matter of fact, sometimes it works against us. One, end up recruiting a lot more biceps. So it just takes the focus off the back if we're only focused on moving a lot of weight. Two, we also have a tendency to use more momentum. So that would mean leaning back to get that weight stack moving. The best example I could give you is let's say I've used this one before in a similar way, but if you were pushing a car, what's harder? Pushing a car that it's at a dead stop to get it rolling or pushing a car that's already rolling even if it's only rolling one mile an hour? Much easier to push something that's already rolling. So if we lean back really fast to generate momentum and get that weight stack moving, it's much easier to keep it moving. So that's where that momentum robs you of that resistance. So just be cautious. It doesn't really matter how much weight you move. What matters more is how you move it. All right, we got one more set of these. So this is initiating that movement with a nice controlled concentric as opposed to this. Now I have uh, had people ask me if I only use super controlled rep speeds, I would say yes and no. Control, yes. Rep speeds, sometimes I'll use different rep speeds. Sometimes I'll use super slow ones just for fun, break it up and they're hard. Doing like three or four second concentrics. That's way harder in my opinion than controlled slow eccentrics. Sometimes I'll do them faster, but I always initiate with control. So here would be a good example. It all comes down to how I initiate the movement. In other words, how I start to put tension on the muscle. So if I go from this position here and initiate it really fast here, that's not using control. So this would be the way that I would not recommend which is initiating it fast and jerky, pulling down, and I see this a lot, super explosive from the top. No, I like to gradually put tension, start to contract it, and then accelerate. So it'd be the difference if you were in your car at a stoplight between just stomping on the, the gas and burning out and taking off versus trying to keep traction and gradually accelerating faster. So, I don't know if that's the best example, the best one I could come up with though. All right, so that was three sets of those. So now we've worked on a lot of pull down, which is focusing a little bit more just on the lats. So now we're gonna do some higher rows, work on engaging those muscles in our upper and middle back, our trapezius, rhomboids, etc. So, we can do these a lot of different ways. I do have a cable row uh, set up down there. I don't really feel like messing with that. Um, I think we're gonna do these right here on the cable machine.
And so I'm going to lean forward to angle my body so that the movement is perpendicular to my torso. So I don't want to be pulling upward. I want to make sure that I'm far enough forward here that that angle of pull, I don't know what it looks like from your perspective, but trying to get that cable perpendicular to my body. Was it perpendicular? Okay. So this is going to be our pronated position. So hands down or palms down. So this one, we're not as strong here as far as the biceps. And then we're gonna do them with that other attachment we have over here with some different angles so you can feel the difference. Like I said, if you're in a gym, you'll want to use the one with a neutral uh, hand position, the rings. They do make some cool ones. I mean, this thing accomplishes the same, but it's the same ring, but the handle will rotate in there. Those are kind of cool. Allows you to do the same thing. But I don't see that in many gyms. If you're a gym owner that has one of those, then you know what's up. All right, here we go. Make sure chest out, chin up. We don't want to round forward. We want a slight arch in our back for a nice strong contraction. And we want to pull high. Drive those elbows back. So elbows are out wide. And pull into about chest height. Get that isometric squeeze right there. Demonstrate that control. If you can't squeeze, then it's too heavy. Now we're also having to use the muscles in our lower back to isometrically stabilize. So you are conditioning those muscles. If those muscles are weak, if you haven't worked them enough, you're probably gonna feel that and might be a little uncomfortable. They might, might start to burn. Also, if you have really bad low back problems, you might not like these. And if that's the case, then you can do different types of rows where your chest is supported, say on a bench. But with that being said, even if you have a bad low back, you should still be doing some basic strengthening conditioning exercises for those muscles. It's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. All right, stretch out. I apologize if I'm huffing and puffing. Allergies make me feel a little bit asthmatic. Not in the best cardiovascular shape these days because I have not been doing as much cardiovascular activity as I should, but I'm not that out of shape. All right, set two. We're gonna save these. We're gonna do those right after, because I want you to feel the difference. <clears throat> Just so you can see how same basic movement, body alignment feels different with a different hand position. All right.
seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Ah. So when we do transition, theoretically we should be weaker because we're tired. So coming into an additional set, you should feel a little bit weaker, but I think you're gonna find that you feel stronger because of the hand position and able to use more of the biceps. So we're gonna do one more set of these and we'll switch over. And let's actually, here's what we do. So keep this on hand, whatever your other bar is, to use more of a, Kind of halfway in between, so not a neutral position. Ideally, I would love to see you use almost a little bit of a supinated position, but if you only have access to that neutral grip bar, we'll use that one. But we're gonna immediately switch out at the end and use it as a finisher. Same exact weight. So you're gonna find that you're gonna be able to squeeze out some more reps there. Besides the fact that we're using a little rest pause just in that transition. So you wanna make it as quick as possible. You don't want to rest too much. All right. Here we go. Two. Three. Tell you what, we're gonna do a little rest pause just to make sure we're thoroughly exhausted. Just really punctuate what we're talking about here. So let's squeeze out a couple more. One. Okay, so you can see that in that position, I'm done. I can't do another one. So now immediately switch over. If I can get my fingers to work. Look at that. Look how many more. It's three, four, five. Oh. So you can see, you're a lot stronger there because we're able to use more biceps. So hopefully that makes my point. That was a good set. Uh, now the good thing is today's, for me anyways, a back and biceps day. So I've already done all my back exercises and I've also pre-fatigued the biceps. So it's not gonna take a whole lot of isolation work here to really come in and finish them off. I'm actually gonna leave this bar on here because we're gonna go back to what we started with, but we're gonna do something in reverse order. So we're gonna start off with a resistance level that we can do for reverse curls. We're gonna do as many as we can. Then we're gonna to switch to a neutral grip to a hammer curl. And then we're gonna supinate it and finish off. So I think, I've never tried it with this attachment. Let's see real quick. So 
So this will be our reverse curl. Then I can come in. It's not too bad. And then lastly, we'll supinate the hand to finish. So see how this goes. And should be very similar to what we just did with rows. That even though we're fatiguing, we'll be able to continue on because we're going to gradually use more and more biceps. All right, let's do this. Now in reverse curls, I like to leave my thumb over the top. It's just my personal preference. Here we go. So we're using a lot of brachialis, which lies underneath the biceps. Also some brachioradialis, which is muscle there in the forearm, which also helps with flexion. And that's because the biceps aren't able to work as hard here. They're not as strong. So those other muscles are having to compensate. And you'll feel it in your forearm. That's that brachioradialis. Ah, that's 10. Let's go to an, a neutral position. It's a little awkward with this handle, but it's all right. We're going to make it work. But you see, I'm able to pick up more reps here. A little bit stronger. And now, finish off supinated. Oh, yeah. Way easier. So, you are using the biceps with all three variations, just to a lesser degree in the beginning. So this muscle here, right here that I'm grabbing hold of, that's that brachioradialis. So that's helping with flexion. The brachialis is underneath. So in this position, biceps is at its weakest point. So the brachialis is in a very strong position. Look how now it's on top here. So it's in line for a nice strong contraction, but you're still working the biceps. Now, hammer grip. Now a little bit of biceps, also brachialis, brachy, brachioradialis, sorry, and brachialis. Kind of, of a more even mix. And then we come into a supinated position where the biceps are the strongest. Yeah, that's a lot to digest in the a mouthful. That just sounded gross. Okay. Here we go. All right. Reverse grip first. And I want you to pay attention to where you start to feel it, where you feel that burn. And my bet is you're going to feel it in that brachioradialis in your forearm first. Okay, neutral grip, hammer. And supinated.
So, I know I would say that. So, so think about this for a second. If our hands pronated, a reverse grip is making the brachioradialis and the brachialis work harder because the biceps aren't in as strong of a position, they're at a mechanical disadvantage in that position, then the same concept applies with our pull downs. If we're putting ourselves in a strong position for biceps, they're gonna take over, not take over, but we're gonna use them more and the back isn't gonna to have to work as much on its own. But if we put it in a mechanical disadvantage, it being the biceps, we are forcing those lats to work harder. What's the trade-off? You can't move as much weight. So with biceps, we have an inclination or a tendency to accept that more with biceps. I know that I can't do as much on reverse curls as I can on a regular curl, but with lap pull downs with rows because we can cheat so much, seems to be harder for us to come to that same realization that we can't sling as much weight in some of those positions. All right, last set of these. You notice this is a relatively quick workout. Just three exercises for back, but we hit this thing from every angle. Again, we already were working the biceps pre-fatiguing them, so it doesn't take a whole lot much or a whole lot more as long as we come in here and really apply the right amount of intensity. You know, a lot of bodybuilders, even famous professional bodybuilders, if you read some of the stuff that they wrote much later on in their career, they all come to the same realization over time, which means experience, that it probably doesn't require as much volume as we think when we're younger. As long as you're training with the right intensity level, you can create the necessary stimulus with far less volume. All right, here we go. Right into that hammer curl. Home stretch. So that right there, we could call that one exercise, but that really was three exercises in one. Obviously reverse curls, hammer curls, regular, regular supinated curls, working all of those arm flexors, right? Brachioradialis here in the forearm, brachialis underneath and biceps. We hit it top to bottom with that. So that right there is actually, not only demonstrates the point that I was trying to make, but it's actually a pretty good exercise. So that's it for today. Hopefully I uh, was able to share something new, be able to apply that into your own training, and I will see you in our next workout, which is gonna be legs.